It's Dr. Jonathan Live. Yeah, Dr. Jonathan Live. Thanks for tuning in to the show. Where all things medical can go. Dr. Jonathan. Yeah, thanks for tuning in. It's Dr. Jonathan Live. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to this very special edition of Dr. Jonathan Live. I'm your host, Dr. Jonathan, and on the show tonight, we have a reprise of our very favorite guest, Adrienne Gang, uh, star of Bravo's Below Deck Season 1. Uh, she's with us back tonight on the show. Hi, Adrienne. How are you? I'm excellent. How are you doing? Oh, I'm doing great. Thank you so much for coming back. We're, we're so happy to have you back on the show. Of course. So, Adrian, tell me, the, the first season of, of Below Deck was so very popular. Now we're on the second season of Below Deck with, with, a, with a lot of the old people back, but some new crew members as well. Uh, we're almost halfway through the season. What do you think so far? You know, I think it's um, mixed emotions for me on a lot of different levels. You know, watching it from the sidelines is a little bit different. I think I'm glad that I'm on the side that I'm on now, uh, having gone through it and not very jealous of the fact that these people are dealing with this all over again, and some of them for the first time. You know, I think that it's a very interesting kind of challenge to be uh, put in the limelight that way. And, you know, I think you don't really know what all your unflattering sides are until you have a camera crew follow you around for six and a half weeks, 24 hours a day. And, you know, I think that it was a very big learning experience for me. I think we did our interview about halfway through the season last year. Mm -hmm. And uh, even since then, I think it's been a massive learning experience for me. So I'm interested to see how the rest of them uh, change throughout the course of this, how they have changed uh, since the last time that we filmed and uh, what is new now. You know, I'm sure. watching some of these new crew members and some of them are fascinating and some of them are interesting and some of them are funny and some of them are downright sexy. But, you know, I think it's uh, it's definitely different from the first season. So Absolutely. I'm entertained. What have you been up to since the first season? Uh, since the first season, I have been uh, on the road for a little while. You know, I spent um, last summer, after I got off the yacht that I was working on, cruising around, uh, celebrating the show, and um, spending a lot of time promoting it. And then uh, got onto another boat and ended up going back to the Caribbean, back to the Bahamas, spent a lot of time down south. And now I'm on a boat that I'm running uh, that I actually hired Kat to work on with me. Yeah, you have to talk more about that. Our viewers are were really surprised about your relationship with Kat. Because as everybody knows, at the end of last season, you two were enemies, for lack of a better phrase. And it seems like Thanks. that changed. I think in uh, in reality TV, as in real life, everybody goes through conflict, and I think that you know the greater part of humanity and uh, forgiveness and understanding is being able to get through that. And Kat reached out to me at one point at the beginning of last year, this past year, and said, you know, I um, am looking for something new. What do you know of anything that's going on? She knows that I've got a great network of people in the industry. And I said, you know what, I've got some day work going on on my boat. And I knew that I had a position that was going to be opening up for the summer. And I was elated to be able to bring her on board. She is awesome. And we have a great time and we laugh a lot. And I think every time that we're walking down the street and people see us together, they're flabbergasted. They're just floored. They really are friends with each other. But you know what? Reality TV is like reality. You know, people argue and they get over it. People argue and they forgive each other. Like, it's not out of the realm of possibility just because we didn't get along on a TV show that we couldn't get along in real life. So we have laughed so hard. We've cried more than one occasion throughout this summer, and we just have a really great time. So I've, I've been lucky that I've been able to have her with me for the summer. It's been a joy. I am just so surprised at that, as I know a lot of people have been. You know, I follow you on Facebook and Twitter, and throughout the summer, you've been posting photos with Kat, and everybody's just been so surprised that you two became friends. 
Um, would would you say that when you're on these reality shows, especially below deck, that the that the producers may show the characters in a certain light to get a certain point across uh, that it's not completely uh, accurate? You know, I have people ask me that all the time, and yeah. to be honest with you, no. no. You know, everything that you see is pretty accurate to life. I mean, granted, I looked like I was stressed out and pissed off the whole time because I was. That was the most stressful event of my entire yeah. life. You know, I was in a really hard position. A lot of people identify with that. You know, middle management. I take my job very seriously. Not everybody else does. You know, I'm the one that has to enforce the rules. That makes it really difficult sometimes to get along with people, especially people that are working underneath you. And so none, none of that was inaccurate. And none of my conflict with Kat was inaccurate. It took us a very long time to work through it. To be honest with you, it was a challenge. But it was something I was willing to do because I know at her core she's a good person and she's got a good heart and she's a hard worker. And for me, as a team leader in my job and on the boat that I run now, I needed to know that I could count on her and I know I can. Yeah, She's been amazing. You know, uh, what I've seen on this season is it's almost like Kat has transformed. She's no longer drinking at least the camera's not showing it she's she's a little bit more professional with the guests but that leads me to the second thing it's almost like this season is an entire transformation between the crew and the guests now it seems like there's a lot of focus on uh the crew not being professional around the guests or what's your take on that that crew uh guest dynamic this season so yeah um this is the hardest thing for me to, to watch. To be mm-hmm. honest with you, I think that no matter what our internal struggles were with each other and what was happening literally below deck with our relationships with each other, we always maintained a very professional face in front of the guests. And the guests never knew that there was any conflict with any of us. And I think that even if we weren't successful at everything else we tried to do, we were magically successful at that Mm -hmm. the fact that Kat and Sam and I were able to keep ourselves together enough that the guests never had a clue that there was conflict tells me that we did something right you know and at least that type of professionalism showed through I might not be the best at making tablescapes but at least my guests never complained that I was bitchy you know I think that That is what I'm seeing play out in front of me, is that there was never an attitude of us versus them. There might have been a whole lot of gang up on Adrian during season one, which I would much prefer over gang up on the guests. Mm -hmm. It's almost like misery loves company, and that's Mm -hmm. what I'm watching now, is the attitude that I see with the crew versus the guests. And I've never witnessed that in my whole life. I've worked on boats for 10 years, and I've never witnessed that. And I've also never seen that happen where your leader, your chief stew, is encouraging that behavior, and the guests are okay with it. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, keep your job if you can't smile and be friendly to the guests. That's just insane to me. So I'm having a really hard time not throwing things at my TV this time around. (laughs) I think a lot of people are. I mean, the, the contrast in personality between Kate uh, and you, I think, is pretty significant. Um, what, what kind of job do you think Kate is doing this season? It, it, is she the reason that this is all happening? Uh, no comment. No comment. Okay, <laughs> fair enough. Um, well, let me ask you this then. Uh, wh- what do you think about Kate's uh, towel folding skills? That, that gained a lot of attention on the last episode. I <laughs> find that horrific. Okay. I feel like if any real chief sue on a real yacht ever did that to a real charter guest they would not have a job in this industry anymore i find it appalling and the fact that they think it's cute and that she pats herself on the back for it and lying about it several times i am abhorred Mm -hmm. by it i i can't even wrap my brain around it sure and it also seems like captain lee has a lot to deal with this season not only with with Kate, with Kate, but also he had to let somebody go earlier in the season, which I think was a first to actually fire Andrew, um, which everybody's, I think, happy that he did finally. But it seems like he's been having a lot to put up with. Well, I think the first time around, you know, Lee uh, was a little bit more hands-off with us. You know, I think he kind of just let us 
run amok. And then I think watching it probably later on with all the things that he was not privy to at the time, you know, being a little bit more interactive this time around was a good move for him. And I think that he's carried himself pretty well. And I think he's had to make some really tough decisions. And that sucks. But as the leader, you have to make sure that everybody's happy and that everybody's safe. And Mm -hmm. not everybody can be happy all the time, but you can ensure everybody's safety a majority of the time. And Andrew was just a liability. I think he probably had a pretty good heart. And I think at his core, he's probably a pretty good kid. I don't know him. But I think at the end of the day, he really was not doing what was best for the boat, which is the safety. Yeah, and that's a really good point. I mean, Andrew admits to having basically lied on his resume uh, to get that job on the ship. And it seems like uh, there's a lot of skills that deckhands have to have. Um, And if you don't have them, that puts everybody in harm's way. And uh, he certainly, for some reason, was able to get past that by lying. Is that, that's probably not that common, right? People are usually pretty honest and they, they, you know, they vet them pretty well, right? Usually, yeah. Okay. I mean, I've seen a couple of people come in under the radar into our industry that don't really have a lot of experience, but mm-hmm. usually they announce that at the beginning. You know, nobody comes into this industry with experience. You have to start from somewhere. Sure. So Good point. As long as you're upfront about that, you know, our industry wouldn't grow if it weren't for people like Andrew that want to get into it. Mm-hmm. You know, I think he just jumped the gun a little bit and bit off more than he could chew. Mm -hmm. And I think that that became blatantly, blaringly apparent to everybody on board pretty quickly, which is why Lee was forced to make a decision Mm -hmm. when he realized what a giant liability Andrew was. There's other liabilities on the boat that might not actually literally sink the ship, but who knows how much it'll jeopardize things later on. You know, attitude that's being carried on right now, I think is just as dangerous as leaving a porthole open. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) Yeah, that that was that was a pretty rookie rookie mistake that Andrew made in leaving his porthole open. I I don't think many people could believe that he did that. Um, but you know that that comes into not only sinking the ship, but also uh, when you don't give great service to guests, it can sink the tip. And that's that seems to be a big issue this season. Last season, everybody really cared about those tips. That gratuity was a big deal. It seems like this season. Even though the guests haven't always been getting top-notch service, they've still been giving pretty good tips. W- what do you say about that? Well, I think two things I say to that. One, I'd like everybody to consider the fact that you can't go get $18,000 out of an ATM in the Caribbean. Good point. So these guests know how much they're going to tip before they walk uh-huh. on. That's I a mean, good point. They might deduct a couple grand here and there, but they know... That they're going to look like assholes if they don't leave a good tip based on what they saw in the last season. Mm -hmm. You know, so it occurs to me that regardless of whatever behavior the crew displays, these people know that they don't want to look like cheapskates on national television. You know, they're really renting the boat. They really are invested in what the service is. But I think that they saw a couple of the guests last time get lambasted for not leaving a great tip. Uh The fact that they weren't treated with 100% professionality, and so I think that that's a real fear. Sure, and the other thing, I don't know if people realize this, but they posted the, I I don't know if it was on the website or one of the blogs about Below Deck, but they posted the average salaries for the crew, which really aren't that bad, they're they're pretty decent. Mm -hmm. So, and correct me if I'm wrong, but you don't pay traditional taxes on that income, do you? Oh, yes you do. Oh, you do, okay, since it's earned. Especially if you're on an American flag boat, of course. So you, so you still do earn, you don't pay, ta- do you pay, t- pay taxes on the tips? Yeah, we do. Okay. Um, because a lot of the times the tips are reported through the crew agency. Okay. Which means, or through the uh, the brokerage agency that's chartering the boat. Mm-hmm. So it's documented somewhere what the tip is. It's not just a fish full of cash. Usually they, they are aware of whatever the crew tip is. Okay, so I guess you can never get away from, from taxes. Um, but... <laughs> Uh, but still, though, uh, it's very. It must be really nice to get a big wad of cash at the end of the charters. Oh, of course. Yeah, and that must be really fun. But to talk a little bit more about the new crew members we have, um, uh, I think everybody's focused on this relationship between Janice and Kelly. Um, and last season we had a similar. There were similar love interests going on. Is that a pretty common occurrence uh, for the crew to? 
to match up like that? You know what? More than you would think. And mm-hmm. I think it's because of the pressure cooker that we're in uh, as crew members. And I'm not saying that I'm immune from that at some point in my history. I mean, I have dated crew members too. You know, I think that it's it, to be in a situation where it's high stress, high pressure, and obviously you need a relief for that. And sometimes the people that you're on board with are that pressure release, whether it's a friend or a lover, whatever that means. You know, I think that that's more common than most people would think. Now, them purposely being stuck in a room together <laughs> is a little bit different. But, you know, last time it worked out that we had an odd number of guys and girls and Sam and CJ ended up in the same room. That doesn't mean that they were necessarily going to be the ones that hooked up together. It just happened to work out that way. So, I mean, it's there's n- definitely... A possibility that there are co-ed rooms. I've been on a, in a rooming situation where I had two guys in my room and me. You know, it doesn't mean I hooked up with both of them or any yeah. of them for that matter. <laughs> but you know, I think it's being in a place that is kind of magical. I think it's being in a situation that's kind of different. I think you know your significant other, if you have one, doesn't necessarily always understand what you're going through, and so I think sure. that's the place that they're finding themselves in because both of them have claimed to be dating other people and I know how that feels you know it's difficult sometimes because you like I said the person back home doesn't always know what you're going through day to day absolutely and last season there was actually a scene where you were talking to your then boyfriend uh via Skype who's now I believe your fiance right no I upgraded (laughs) you're you're already married no, I uh, I'm engaged, but to somebody else. So. Oh, somebody else. So okay. So so, but a different. But you're still engaged. Different yes. fiance. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Congratulations on that. Lots ago. So yeah, it's somebody different, okay. but it's an upgrade. Okay. Well, congratulations on that. But uh, thank do you. you. Do you think that your yachting life caused a lot of stress in that old relationship that you had? Undoubtedly. Un- so okay, and that probably yeah. happens a lot because it's interesting on the show. Ben talks about his girlfriend back home. Uh, uh, Janice talks about her boyfriend back home. Um, so uh, a lot of the, the folks on the yacht do have l- love interest back home, and, and, and it's like a constant struggle uh, because everybody knows from last season, for instance, that Ben and Kat had a little uh, little pairing up during the show. Um, but Ben it seems to be doing uh, seems to be staying away from that this season and uh, paying respect to his girlfriend back home. Um, Fingers crossed on that one. Yeah, well, we'll see. We'll see what the season uh, shows. But also, it's really interesting having siblings on the show, uh, Amy and Kelly, uh, which I think is just really unique uh, to have them in that kind of pressure cooker environment. And there's a lot of emotion that comes out during the show between them because it uh, because of their past. It doesn't sound like they've were really that close in their past, and now they're getting closer. So. Well, I think I think that's a really cool um, opportunity for them. You know, absolutely. I've worked with siblings before, and it's always a blast. You know what I mean? Like I had a captain and a first mate who were brothers who were from Montana, and they are amazing, and they were a blast to work for, and they got along really well. And it was kind of a different working situation because it encouraged us all to be a lot more like family yeah Uh, i think coming from the captain down it was a different story than like siblings who work together on deck or whatever it is but you know i think they have a very cool storyline i think that they've got you know something very different there and i enjoy watching both of them you know i think that kelly with his discipline and the marine background and watching that play into yachting you know i think that one of the things that has always been a very big thing for me is letting the military know that once they're done with their tenure with that, that yachting has a place for them. Absolutely. Good point. It hasn't been stressed enough. You know, I've helped several former military, uh, retired military get into yachting because it's, you know, we can always use the discipline. We can always use people who are like-minded in the way that it's follow direction and do what you're told and make sure everybody's safe and everybody's happy and healthy. You know, those that mentality carries over. And yachting is a very good place for that, for people that are uh, former military. And I always encourage people who reach out to me, and several did after last season. You know, there was uh, one guy who I became very friendly with uh, through social media who actually ended up going and taking a couple courses. And then as soon as he was ready, I got him placed on a yacht with friends of mine. Wow. And he yeah. loved it. 
Yeah, I mean, yachting is certainly, it looks like very hard work, very disciplined work, uh, very long hours, all things that people learn in the military. Um, although it's probably not as stressful as the military, it's still all those skills come, come, in, come in handy. So uh, for, for anybody out there who's interested in joining the yachting industry with a military background, uh, uh, it's something to think about, definitely. Um, Adrian, let's get, let's get to start talking about what a lot of people have been asking about this season is they want to know, first of all, they want you back. Uh, We all wish that you were on this season. Um, Why aren't you on this season? Um, I wasn't asked to come back. Um, I think that they wanted to change things up, and I don't blame them. Um, I had a good run the first time around. I'm hoping to have another crack at it one of these days. We'll see. But I think that it's interesting to show the different styles of the way that people do things. You know, it's obvious that my style is completely different from Kate's. And uh, she's been doing this longer than I have, you know, which maybe is the reason behind her comfort level with, you know, uh, degrading the guests and uh, insulting them uh, to their faces, maybe. Uh, Mm -hmm. But I I can only venture to guess at this point. Okay. For me, it's, again, I'm enjoying watching from the sidelines. I'm excited about my return. Uh, We all are. Can you give us any clues? uh, Well, uh, there's something to be said for scissoring lesbians on national television. I think we saw a photo of that (laughs) on the website. You know, I think it's funny to um, to revisit what happened last time. Mm-hmm. And in the very last episode, we had some amazing guests come on board that had a really great time. And probably because they didn't get drunk and hook up with any of the guys on the show uh, at any point during the season, it was obviously assumed that I must be a lesbian. But, you know, when the women came on board and had such a great time, and I had such a great time with them, and then, of course, Sam's comment behind that being, well... Adrian must have scissored them in order for us to get such a great tip. All right, let's make a funny now. You know, I mean, it's it, to, to us, it's hilarious, and it's because we're still friends that we can laugh about it. But, um, but yeah, I think nobody should take offense to it. It's <laughs> all in good fun, really. It's all in good fun, and you you remained friends with those charter guests from last season. With many good of friends. the charter guests from last season, absolutely. Uh-huh. I am still in touch with several of them. Actually, Steve Jones, the hypnotist is a good buddy. He's amazing and he's always trailblazing in what he does. And uh, all the the entrepreneurs that we had on board with the bed bugs and the That's right. know, college moving group, they're all from Tampa. So I see them too. You know, yeah. I've been able to hang out with them since then. So I've stayed in touch with quite a lot of the uh, charter guests from last season. Yeah. The interesting thing about the show is the cameras uh, even if they're rolling 18 hours a day or what have you, they don't at least show on the on on the show what happens 24 hours a day. So you guys have a lot of downtime where you're probably just talking, chatting with the guests. Uh, they're obviously all very successful because they need a lot of money to be on the on the on the charter. So you must get some really great networking and really great insight into things. You know what I would say to that is that. That is probably the most amazing thing that this career has afforded me is the close proximity to people that have been so massively successful mm-hmm. with what they've done. They wouldn't be sitting or owning a charter yacht if they if they hadn't gotten to that point. And so to be able to be friends with these people and be able to call on them if I need advice or help or you know business advice or stock tips or whatever it is, you know, I've been very fortunate that all of these people have been an amazing support for me. You know, I think that they recognize that I did everything I could to give them the best possible vacation that I could, despite my lack of experience in that particular role. You know, I grew into it, I suppose, and I still had plenty to learn. I did actually end up taking a yacht management, I'm sorry, a yacht management course, yeah, that is, uh, that just started this year. So it's actually called a helm course. I took it at MPT down in Fort Lauderdale, the uh, marine professional training. And uh, it was an eye-opening experience. You know, I think that there are, sometimes you get handed a role that you're not necessarily ready for, but you're ready to grow into. And I think that's exactly where I was before. And being able to take a management course and really realize how I can better communicate myself because I'm the one that's in charge of me, not anybody else. Mm -hmm. 
being Absolutely. able to go through those turns, I think, was a pretty valuable experience for me. And going into this summer with Kat, I think, has massively improved our relationship because I was able to look at things that I was doing before. You know, I don't need you to respect me because my position calls for it. I want to be able to be on that level with you where it comes naturally. Uh -huh. I think that that's the difference between where I was before and where I am now. Sure. Before you, had, there was a lot on the season one, there were a lot of talks on the show about you telling crew that they needed to respect you because of your position. Um, and they, well, to put it blatantly, they, they weren't very professional oftentimes to you or respectful. And now it, it comes easier because they just respect you more. Uh, so that must be a nice thing. So that's a good segue into work that you've been doing uh, outside of the show. I know that last year you did some work with uh, breast cancer research, right? And also you were doing some uh, work with some... Uh, drug testing kits. Um, do you want to tell us more about that? Yeah, I did a lot of work with Save the Tatas, which is a breast cancer awareness organization, mm -hmm. and we're gearing up to come back to October again. So I think we'll be running right back into that, which I'm very excited about. You know, that, that one particular organization above any of the rest of them, I have found to uh, be really outspoken and really kind of jovial about the whole thing, which I, I find refreshing, to be honest with you. Mm -hmm. You know, as far as the GHB stuff, there's been, even in the last year, even since the last time we spoke, there's been two massive advents in what's happening. And uh, one of them I've gotten involved in, which is basically like a USB stick that you can stick into your drink and then it actually reports back to your iPhone and tells you what is in your drink, what's in your solution. So if there's something that's harmful to you, it'll warn you. Uh, which is pretty cool. And that reports it back to a, a larger database that if somebody in your location has had a test drink, uh, a drink test positive for uh, any kind of, you know, substances outside of what you're used to in an adult beverage, it'll let you know. It'll warn you as you walk into that place that that's what's going on, which I think is phenomenal. I mean, more than I ever could have possibly imagined. So we still have, uh, you know, Drink Safe Tech, which is the test strips that you can use, um, and I've got I've been totally proactive with those guys. And then there's actually a couple of college students that put together a nail polish. Now I haven't tried it. Heard so about it that? Works, but it's fascinating. So the fact that there. So many things coming in such succession so quickly makes me really happy about it. Yeah. And it lets me know that people are doing things to not only bring awareness to it, but preventative maintenance. And, and you've been very vocal uh, about these uh, date rape drugs, right? Um, for lack of a better term. Um, and it seems like the technology is just uh, getting so much better. Now, where can people go? Is there a website that they can go to if they're interested in learning more about these? Yeah, the uh, the USB stick is still in um, in development. Still experimenting. Yeah, they're okay. still experimenting with it. But Drink Safe Tech T E C H is where you can go to get the test strips. So anybody can carry those. I have them in my purse all the time. Mm -hmm. I give them to all my friends, so everybody has them. It's not necessarily going to prevent you from being drugged, but at least it's a first line of defense, and it's one more security that you can give yourself that you have it. You know, if you get up from the bar and walk away from your drink and come back to it and you think there's any possibility something bad could have happened to it, you can test it right then and there. Mm -hmm. Or most bars I have found, by the way, at this point, will just take it back and make you a new one. If oh, there's really? any question, yeah, absolutely. I've had amazing luck with that. You know, maybe one or two places in the last year that I've been to where I said, you know what, I, I'm not sure what, if I watch this drink the whole time, I'd like a new one, and they make you a fresh one because they would rather not have something bad happen to you at their establishment. Yeah, I think that's a wonderful idea, uh, and, and for all of our viewers uh, to take that tip to heart uh, as well uh, next time they're out. Um, well, that's great, Adrian. We're, we're so happy to have you on, and we're so, gl we're so glad that, that, you, that um, it sounds like your career has really been uh, taking off and escalating. Where do you see yourself uh, in the future? Hopefully, we all want to see you on season three of Below Deck, of course. Oh, thank you. But do you, do you plan to like own your own yacht or yachting company? How, or, or what do you want to do? Um, I am dabbling in yacht management right now. Uh -huh. uh, I am writing a book that should be out pretty soon. What's it, what's it called? Uh, we're not there yet. Okay, we're not there yet, but I get an autographed copy, of course. <laughs> of course you will. Uh, absolutely. absolutely. Well. Yeah. 
So what's um, it about? Can you tell us that? Yeah, it's a hospitality driven book. Okay. So it's it's very much in the same vein as what I do, which I'm pretty excited about. And I'm collaborating with a couple of other people that are really well known at what they do. And I'm pretty excited about that too. So it's kind of a, this is how we do what we do book. And uh, I am also in the process of putting together a bikini line that should be out very shortly. And I will be sure to send you one so that you can model it. Oh, forever. thank you so much. I, I get a lot of stuff, fan mail. Uh, so, but I think that'll be the first bikini I get. Uh, I don't know my sizes, but you can You have guess. to just hashtag bikini life. That's it. That's okay. All <laughs> okay so they send you something that matches your skin tone yeah oh, thank you thank you yes yes that, that would be amazing uh speaking of which you you do a lot you've been doing a lot of photo shoots lately in the bikinis it looks like and uh you've gotten a lot of success from that looks like a lot of attention at least absolutely yeah i have linked up with a woman uh from south florida that has wink bikinis and her and i have teamed up and now i'm starting to design my own uh, and so we're kind of in the the last phases of that. So I'm very excited to be rolling that out pretty soon. So I think that no matter where you are, no matter what you do, no matter what your career path is, that everybody can identify with the beach lifestyle, with the yachting lifestyle. And I'm pretty excited to be able to bring a new line of bikinis. My favorite part about which that I'm not afraid that my girls are going to go anywhere when I'm <laughs> them which is a huge problem most of the time so that's so, what the bikinis strive to to solve that's a problem they they solve exactly okay now where can people go can they buy them now uh, uh we're not ready yet okay. uh, very soon so i'll be rolling it out on all my social media so at adrian gang um and i'm sure all that information will be up on your website sure. and um yeah and my facebook page as well which is adrian gang so everything is pretty easy to find will probably uh, be at that point very shortly in the next couple of weeks. So I'm really excited about it. That's just the beginning of many other things. Yeah, so. well, we're all very excited about it, too. Uh, all that information is below if you want to follow Adrian Gang on Twitter and also uh, follow the updates in her life. You can also follow her on Facebook. Uh, and uh, she and I uh, are also friends, and so I talk to her all the time on Twitter. So you should follow me at Dr. Jonathan on Twitter and uh, to stay in touch with those updates. Adrian, it was so good to have you back on the show. Thank you so much. I can't wait for the show tomorrow night. Uh, I know uh, I'll be having a viewing party. Um, you're always welcome to come. Uh, and I'm sure you'll be having a better viewing party, uh, though. <laughs> Um, but I'm going to be at a gay club in the Castro in San Francisco, so I think it's going to be a good time. Yeah, that, that'll definitely be more fun than, than my uh, my viewing party, but mine will still be okay. But anyways, we're, we're all, we can't wait to see it tomorrow night uh, on Bravo at, on Tuesdays at 9, 8 central, only on Bravo. Uh, be sure to watch everybody. Uh, and Adrian, thank you so much for being here, and we hope to have you again on season three, where hopefully you will star. Yeah, me too. Thank you, Jonathan. Oh, it was a pleasure as always. My pleasure. Okay, take care. <laughs>